Welcome to the super simple lesson on how to play spades. By the end of this video, you will know how to play spades. Let's go. As you know, if you've seen my other video tutorials on how to play card games, puzzle games, board games, you know that I over explain and go into super uber detail on how to play a game. So this video is broken into two parts. Part one is me going over all of the rules. And part two will be me walking through some very, very simple hands. Now, if you want to get really good at spades, you can then continue on to my second video on how to play spades, which has the advanced strategies. And that assumes you already know how to play, which assumes that you have watched this video. So spades is played with two teams of two, with the partners seated across each other at the table. I'm playing with my partner. I am here. My partner is there. And my partner and I are playing another team, which is also sitting to my left and right. And we're going to be playing in a clockwise motion. The goal of the game is to get 500 points before the other team does by playing multiple rounds of hands. Although you can negotiate a, early, a lower number before the game begins. And the game is broken into two parts. Part one is the bid round, and part two is playing the trick-taking rounds. Now, a bid round means that at the very beginning, you're going to look at your cards, and you're going to determine how many tricks can I win. And everybody is going to bid how many tricks they think they can win based on their card. Now, what is a bid? What is a trick? How does this work? Do not worry. Let's first talk about trick-taking game. It's a trick-taking game. Now, if you don't know what a trick-taking game is, I have a video just on the basics of trick-taking. But essentially, a trick-taking game is one where you have players and everyone lays a card down in a clockwise motion of a certain suit and the person who has the highest win. Now, if you know what a trick-taking game is, you can skip 30 seconds of this video. A trick-taking game works where everybody goes around, usually in a clockwise fashion, and lays down a card one at a time. The person who goes first leads. They lay down a card, and essentially the simplest rule of this is that everybody then going around in the clockwise motion must then lay down a card of the same suit. We've heard the expression, I want you to follow suit. It comes from the concept of a trick-taking game. So if I lay down, say, a 10 of diamonds, the person to my left must lay down a diamond, as well as the person across from me, and then the person to my right. If they don't have that suit, then they can lay down another suit, but they can't lay down another suit unless they don't have the leading suit. At the end of all four cards coming around, the suit that was played first, so in this case, I'm, I'm saying I played a 10 of diamonds. The suit that was played first, whatever the highest diamond is, wins the trick, meaning they get all four of those cards. And they get to take all those four, four cards, and that's a trick. They also get to lay down a card in the next round, meaning they get to lead, meaning they get to pick what suit they want to lay down that everyone must follow in the next round. And this is the basic of all trick-taking games. Now, all of these trick-taking games do it slightly differently. The thing that makes spades unique is that the spade cards are what they call trump cards. What's a trump card? A trump card is that one suit that is higher than all other cards in the deck. If somebody lays down a diamond, another person plays a diamond, another person plays a diamond, but the last person doesn't have any diamonds to play, and they play a spade, it doesn't even matter if it's the lowest spade, a two of spades, they actually win that trick. So let's talk about when you can play a spade. You can't just play a spade because you want to play a spade. You can't lay down a spade as a lead card because you want to. They have to be broken. Let's talk about what that means. To break the spades is very similar to how it works in other trick-taking games, such as hearts and so forth. It means that you can't play a trump card, you can't play a spade until you don't have suit to play and you're forced to play a spade. So nobody can start to lay down any spades until one person breaks it by having to lay down a spade because they were forced to. So you can't start by laying down a spade. You have to wait for somebody to break the spades. And after they've broken the spades, then at that point, you are allowed moving forward on future tricks 
to start or lead with a spade, but not before somebody breaks it. As you can see, this game has shaded the spades for me because I'm not allowed to lead yet with spades because spades have not been broken. Before the game starts, you have to predict, based on the cards in your hand, how many tricks you think you can win. And I'm going to talk a little bit later about how you maybe can make that guess. But essentially, you look at your hand and go, do I have a lot of high cards? Because you'll most likely be able to win a trick if you have a high card. Somebody lays down, say, a 10 of hearts, but you have the ace of hearts. Most likely, you'll, you could win that trick. There's no guarantee, as you'll see, but it's a good way to sort of have a ballpark. You can look at how many spades you have. Oh, I've got a lot of spades. I can probably get to the point where maybe I can win a lot of tricks playing with a lot of spades. You have to come up with a ballpark guess. If you're looking at a lot of low cards, you're probably not going to win a lot of tricks. So the way the spades works, there's two rounds. There's the bid round and then there's the playing round where you play all 13 tricks. And you then see how did you do with your prediction of how many you bid. So if you bid, say, I think I'm going to win four tricks. And then when you count up all your tricks at the end, you got to have four tricks. If you have less than four tricks, if you're under what you bid, you actually get no points. But if you or where you bid, where you think you could be, or higher, you get points. I'm going to go over scoring and points in just a second. So everybody has been dealt 13 cards times four people. That makes 52 cards in the deck, one deck with no jokers. After all the cards are dealt, players arrange them in their hands. And then starting from the player on the left, each player bids on how many tricks they think they can take. So as you see here, I dealt the player to my left, bid four. The player to in front of me, who is my partner, thinks he can win three tricks. Player to the right, my other opponent, thinks he can win four tricks. And now it's turned to me. And it's asking me, how many do I think I can win? To be honest with you, you want to kind of be conservative when guessing. Because if you guess too high and you can't hit it, you get zero. So let's talk about the scoring real fast. You get 10 points for every trick, assuming that you got your bid. So let's use the person on the left as this example here. He's saying he thinks he can win four tricks. By winning four tricks, he would get 10 points a trick or 40 points. If he got more, so let's say he got six tricks, well then, since he bid four, he gets 10 points for the four he thought he had, which is 40, but then he only gets one point for the additional two that he won. So he predicts that he's going to win four bids. He gets six bids. He gets 42 points. 40 because he predicted four, two because he won two more than that. If he had predicted six and came in exactly at six, he would have had 60 points. Let's say he bid four tricks. He only gets three tricks. Well, he gets zero points. Now, there is one other thing you should know, which is, you're playing with your partner. The team need to come up with the combined total of the partners. So in the case of person to my left and the person to my right, he's guessing he's going to win four tricks. The person to my right is guessing that he's going to win four tricks. So they need to win collectively eight tricks or 80 points. If they only collectively get seven points, they get zero. Look at my partner. He's guessing three. So looking at my hand, I actually don't have a lot of good cards. I honestly, I don't have many spades, and I only have one ace and no other face cards. I'm actually not inclined to think I'm going to win more than two. I think two is the most I, I, I probably will win. I could probably win with my ace of spades. I can't promise that I'm going to win any other spade here. I may win with this ace, and I, maybe I'll win with this jack of spades, but to be honest with you, I'm probably not going to win more than two. Maybe to be safe, I'm going to bid one. Okay, so let's go ahead and play a sample round and talk through it. Here we go. So the player on the right is the first person to go. Everybody must follow suit with the diamonds, and he knows that there's no higher diamond on the board except him. So 
everybody is probably going to lay down diamonds that are much lower. If you didn't have a diamond, then you could lay down a spade and then you would trump it and you would win it. But he's betting on the fact that everybody here early in the game has at least one diamond to lay down and therefore they're forced to lay that one diamond down and therefore he's going to win this trick. Probably right. So I'm going to lay down a diamond. And he did win the trick. So as you see, he has one trick that he's won. He's bid four. Because you won the first trick, he gets to lead again. And he led with a queen of clubs. I have an ace of clubs. I actually have the highest clubs in here. And assuming that the person to my left and my partner at least have one club, which they will be forced to play because you must follow suit, I will win this trick. I know that I've at least fulfilled my contract. I know the check mark. I was being really cautious. So I won my first trick and I won my first trick just to make my contract because like I said, these are not great cards. So I'm just going to have to play a card. So I'll just play the nine. Okay, so let's talk about what happened here. So the player to my left doesn't even have a diamond. So he was able to play his first spade, but he's also told the rest of the table something important, which is I don't have any more diamonds. So he's won, and now he gets to lead, and he leads with a heart, an ace of hearts, knowing that early enough in the game, hearts have not been played yet. Most likely, everybody's sitting on one heart. So he plays an ace. There's no higher heart than an ace of hearts. My partner laid down a seven of hearts. My, the person to the right laid a four of hearts. Yes, I have hearts in my hands. No one's going to play a spade and trump him. I, I've lost. I'm not going to win this trick, so I might as well get my lowest heart. So he continues on with hearts. He plays a jack of hearts. Fortunately, my partner has a higher than a jack of hearts. And since we know, and this is great about the game of spades, is you want to remember what's been played because we know that ace of hearts was just played. My partner in laying down that king of spades knows I have the highest hearts. Nobody's going to lay down an ace of hearts because it's been played. The only thing that my partner has to worry about is maybe somebody not having a heart, the person to my right not having a heart, and he's going to lay down a spade and trump it. But, but that didn't happen. He laid down an ace of hearts. I have no high hearts. I'm going to lose so I can lay down my hearts. And my partner wins at least his one trick. He gets to lead. He lays the king of clubs down, which he knows he's probably going to win as long as somebody doesn't lay down a spade. And again, you're not able to lay down a spade if you have a club in your hand. I, of course, played that ace of clubs, so he knows that he has the highest club. This is why it's good to remember everybody's cards. So I know I'm not going to win this trick, but I want my partner to make the three that he's bid. So I'll put a low one down and let him win this trick. He's got two of the three. So he's going to continue on with clubs, but the person on the right doesn't have any more clubs. And so look what he's done. He's played a seven of spades, which is trumping the clubs. And he will win this trick with a seven of spades because I have to play a club because I have a club in my hand. And so I'll play a club and the person to the left will have to play a club. But it doesn't matter. Even if he doesn't have it, the spade is going to trump and win this trick. Does he have a club? He had to play it. Therefore, the spade won. And now he's got the lead. He's got two of the four of the bids that he's made. So now he's laying out a heart. If you have a heart, you have to play it. In this particular case, I have a heart. I have to play it. I, this is where it's good to remember, and I kind of forgot. What higher hearts have been played so far? I don't think many. So the person to the left had a queen of hearts. That beat me, and he would have won this trick. But look what happened. My partner, who was out of hearts, played a spade, and therefore was able to take that trick he has three out of, he, he bid three, he has three, he fulfilled his contract, which is great. I fulfilled my contract, which is great. So my partner leads the next trick, he leads with the jack of diamonds. Everybody has to follow suit if you have diamonds. So I do have a diamond. Again, my cards were very low. I know I'm not going to win. But the person on the left didn't have a diamond. He played a spade, he trumped, and he took that trick. Now let's look at the person on the left who's leading. So he leads by playing a two, a low heart. In this particular case, my partner didn't have a heart, but he also didn't play a spade. 
for whatever reason, I don't know if it's the computer, I don't know if he doesn't have a spade, but if you don't have the heart and you don't have a spade, you have to throw away another card of another suit. To the right of me, he doesn't have any hearts either, so he played another spade, thus trumping to say that he's going to win that trick. However, because I don't have a heart, I'm allowed to play a spade as well, and I'm the last card to go, and since I have a jack of spades and an ace of spades, I could play one of them and guarantee that I will win this trick. I only predicted I'd win one, but I will now win a second trick. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to play the ace. And I'm not going to play the ace because if I play the jack, that's enough to win, and it puts me in control, and then I can lead the next round with that ace of spades, guaranteeing I even win that. So I'm going to win the next two tricks. I've won that trick. And now I'm going to play the ace of spades, which is a guaranteed win because whatever anyone lays down, the ace is going to beat it. And what's interesting here, folks, is that if you look at on my left, where he has three of his four tricks he needs one more and if you look at the person on the right he's won two tricks of the four that he's predicted but there's only two cards left both of them can't win even if left and right were to take these next two tricks one of them would still be one trick short whereas my partner and i we not only did we fulfill our contracts but we're over i could have bid more than one because i've won more than one so i still get to lead the clubs, unless someone has a higher club than me or a spade. I don't remember. Let's see. Well, he had a spade. So nine of spades is the highest spade. And now he's laid down his last card, but I don't have a diamond. So he is probably going to take this trick as well. And so let's talk about the scoring on this one. My partner and I predicted we would have four tricks. He would have three and I would have one. And we had a total of six tricks. So we got the 40 points because we bid four at 10 points each. And then we had two extra. So those are two points each. We ended up with 42 points in this round. But look at my opponents. They each predicted they would hit four, which is eight tricks. But they only got seven tricks. So they didn't actually make their contracts. And they actually lost those points. I don't know why they lost the points. I thought it was zero. We'll have to get to that.